Well, holy smokes, it has been three weeks since my last video, and yes, I have a major update. I'm just gonna break it down. I'm going back to foster care. I'm sadly single again. I'm not gonna talk too much about that, but I'm gonna I'm gonna fill you guys in. I'm gonna fill you guys in. Here's the intro. Let's do this. Let's do this now. Okay, so, uh, yes, I am single again. Uh, Alex and I are no longer together. It is very difficult to deal with, it is very heartbreaking. Uh, it's not something that I wanted, but uh, we both have, I guess, our own paths and things didn't really align. So um, what I will say is, I'm not gonna talk much about this because I want to keep that part of my life private, but um, sometimes people come together and they're aligned, sometimes they come together and they're not. What I will share is there were things that I need to work on. Uh, I am very open about my life. I have codependency issues. Uh, I fear a lot of things in life and um, need to work on those things. And I am working on those things. Uh, I'm working on them through therapy and different things like that. Um, but obviously there's two to tango and you know, Alex is on his own journey in life and it is what it is. So hopefully one day we'll be able to come back together. Maybe who knows if that's what the fates align and God wants. And if it's not, then it's not. Um, there was a little bit about me being a parent, a foster parent, even doing IVF. And if, um, you know, he was ready or not for that. Um, and that's something that I think you're only going to know as you are in a relationship with someone. I have to remember that I went down this journey, uh, by myself and he, you know, came on board sort of, kind of, and... Um, basically realized it wasn't for him right now. Um, and that's, that's that. I don't really want to go into depth with this stuff. You know, I own my own things and the things I struggle with in life and in relationships and I'm working on those things. Now, what I will say is why did I stop foster care in the first place? And why did I move transition to IVF? that I do want to talk about and I want to talk about why I've decided to go back to foster care. So let's start with uh, why I stopped foster care in the first place. Y'all know that everything I experienced with the D Department of Family and Children's Services was insane and it drove me crazy. One thing drive me crazy. It just was a lot of emotions and roller coaster and it, it was just too much. After baby S left, I realized that I needed a break. And friends of mine, people in the system that work with the system all recommended I take a break. I tried to go a little bit more and it was just too much to where I said, you know what, I'm gonna stop this. In that time when I met my ex, I realized that maybe I should do IVF. And what I'm finding now is that I actually stopped foster care for a greater percentage, uh, the reason for that was greater than I realized, and 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 it had to do with my relationship. It had to do with, you know, making excuses for myself. Oh well, you know, I don't know how it's gonna work in a relationship, and I don't know how like, you know, if he really wants to do this or not. So IVF will give us more time to just build this relationship and build what we're doing together. Uh, and kind of put the baby stuff on pause a little bit, but it's still moving forward because I'm making the money for it, raising the money for it, working hard, and you have to make the baby for nine months. So I was like, okay, this is gonna give us more time and I could focus on the relationship a little bit more. However, there's something that I said when I started this process, I started this process over a year ago, over a year ago, I said, Kevin, if you meet a guy and you have a child or you don't have a child and you're waiting on a child, 
do not, do not stop foster care for a guy. Yes, things in life change and there's, there's ups and downs and, and things morph and mold. But I told myself that before this because I know myself and I know how codependent I can be. And I knew that if I found someone that made my heart race and things were exciting that, and this is, I think a very human thing that I would, I wouldn't have obviously given up a child, but if I didn't have one, I would have backed away from foster care or stopped the process entirely. And unfortunately that's what I did because, well, I, fell in love and I wanted to keep nourishing what I had. And I was scared and upset and and like pissed off at the system and I just got sidetracked, I guess, and it was all confusing. So when I got to the point, it was actually going through the breakup. That's why you all haven't seen a video from me for a while because I didn't really want to talk at all about this. And I didn't know how much I wanted to talk about because it's not anyone's business other than mine and Alex's. So as I was going through that and processing, processing that and then processing what I want to do with foster care or not, I got a phone call. I got a phone call on a Friday a couple weeks ago from my foster agency. Um, and they basically, they called me I was literally getting in the shower because I was about to go show a house downtown and then Alex and I actually had plans to go to a Dodgers game now we had been broken up at this time but we were you know we still are cordial with each other and care about each other and you know like we don't who knows what the future holds right but like so basically I'm getting in the shower and I get a phone call and I see it says Elvia who is the placement worker at my agency. I was like, what the hell? Why are they calling me, right? <laughs> I needed some of that. So I was like, let me just pick up this call. And I pick up, I'm like, hi, Elvia. And she's like, hi, Kevin. And she's always really sweet, really nice. It's like, hi, Kevin, how are you? And I said, I'm doing well. Granted, I'm like getting in the shower <laughs> this time. I'm like, I'm doing well, what's going on, Elvia? And she, she says, well, Kevin, uh, there is, um, I just wanted to know, are you still open for placements? I said, well, you know, I did say I was going to stop. And she says, well, I've been thinking about you all week. We've had four baby calls, newborn babies. And um, she goes, um, we just got a call today for a newborn baby boy. He's two days old. He's in the hospital right now. He's gonna be released on Monday. This was on a Friday. She said he's gonna be released on Monday. He's withdrawing. He's a Nigerian baby boy. And um, basically, uh, you know, I just kept thinking about you and I was like, I gotta reach out to Kevin. So I said, well, okay. Um, and I don't know why I had this like sense of calmness over me. It's like, okay, well, do me a favor and call the social worker back and find out, excuse me, of course, Lake was just scratching his collar. I said, call the social worker back and find out um, what drug the baby was on. Because that's important to know as you're doing foster care, maybe I'll do another video about this. As you're doing foster care, it's important to know if they were withdrawing from a drug, what drug were they on? Because um, from my understanding, there's slight differences in like what the results of each uh, drug that the mother was using that how and how it can affect the brain cells and the body of the child. So she said, I don't know, I'll call the social worker back. I said, okay, do that. So here's where things get insane. I was like, all right, if I say yes to this child, I'm not gonna pick this child up until Monday. So I have the whole weekend to go to storage, get everything out of storage and bring it back here. I get in the shower when she calls and I knew it was going to take her two to five minutes to call them, ask them that question and call me back in the shower. The, now I'm in the shower. I turn the shower on and I fall to my knees and I'm like, God, 
I need an answer and I need an answer right now. Do I bring this child in? Do I bring this child in? And I heard without a shadow of a doubt, and it was instantly, yes, yes. Not only did God answer my question, but he answered both the questions. I asked it two times and he answered it two times. And I said, okay, fine, I'll do it. I'll listen. And I finished in the shower before she called me back and I got out and she called me back and I'm like in a towel and she tells me she wasn't able to get a hold of the social worker, um, but she would find it out. And I said, okay, I said, Elvia, I'll take the child in. There was more conversation, but I said, I'll take the child in and you know, I'll pick them up at the hospital on Monday. I didn't feel super excited. I didn't feel super anxious. I just was like, okay, so be it. Now, I knew, I know, obviously, if you guys know my story, I know how the system works. They call you on Friday, tell you to pick that baby up on Monday. Anything can happen. Anything can happen in a matter of hours. So surely anything can happen in a matter of a weekend. I'm getting dressed, I'm getting ready to leave, and I get a phone call from Alvia, and she says, hey Kevin, they ended up placing the child with a different family. Come here, buddy, let me take that off for you. I know, it's bothering you. There we go, see? She said, uh, they ended up placing the, call, placing the child with a different family, I think closer to where the child was located. You guys know that in the past when this has happened, it has driven me crazy. This time, I was like, Okay, cool. Thanks, Elvia. She said, do you want to be put back on the list for vacancies? I said, sure. Put me back on the list. But I said, Elvia, I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to say no to placements. If you call me, I would like you to call me for a child that is, you know, sort of like this. Like the mother was homeless. The mother, you know, had already lost children to adoption in two different states. Um, there were some other things about the family that like this mother, this situation, obviously all situations are going to go first stop reunification. I support it. But this was also like the track record is this baby probably would end up going to, uh, adoption. Like, and again, reunification first, anyone who wants to clap at me in the comments, I don't care. Do what you got to do. I'm very open about the fact that I want to foster with the intention of adopting. If you don't like it, unsubscribe to my channel. Um, but if you do like it, subscribe. Um, so I said, I would rather you not call me for three months and then call me later with a call that is the right fit for me because we know what I'm looking for. I need to protect my emotions as I go through this process. Just fostering, it's not for me. There are a lot of people that will just foster. I would like to foster to adopt. And then, so we need to do as much as we can do. You cannot control anything about this, this process, but we want, I wanna do as much as we can do to help put myself and the child that I'm with in the, in the situation that's best for both of us. So now, do I understand that reunification is first? Yes, I do. I will support it. I understand what it's like to give a child to a new family or back to the family. Like, I support it. Um, I, wanna, I wanna make sure that I'm mentally in the place of understanding all of that and that's where I feel like I'm at. So, you know, I did get over the last two weeks, I have gotten two phone calls. One was for a baby boy, uh, ended up not working out. I was gonna pick him up from the hospital. Uh, I guess we haven't heard anything back from them, so I guess they just went to another family. Um, and there was one other and it just didn't work out. I am totally okay with it all because I, I feel like the last few months I needed that break from the system and everything that I went through with baby L and baby S, I feel like was the things that I needed to like, to like pull off that, that like scab from the system and understand the craziness of it. Because if you're doing this, it is very insane. It is emotional. It's an emotional roller coaster. And I just needed a moment to like 
stop and process it all. And I feel like now I have the bandwidth in me to experience Oh, something with dust in my throat or something to experience like the insanity of it. It doesn't mean that I'm not gonna be like sad if and when, because I'm most likely gonna have to reunify a child, if and when reunification happens. It's gonna be really, really hard, but I'm at a whole different place in my mind. You know, I've been doing this now for over a year and um, it's, it's been, I have, I have, I have very little expectations, but I know what to expect, if that makes sense. So that's what's going on. Um, all of the baby stuff is here. Like I've got the, I can't, I can't get the stroller, but all the baby stuff is here. Um, I can show you this, Johnson and Johnson. <laughs> um, and the strollers are back, Clex back, uh, the, everything's back. You know, I reset up my apartment to be uh, a different set up. I'll do a video on all of this when, um, maybe the next video I'll show you guys the new setup of the place. But um, right now we're just waiting for the child to get here whenever I get a child here. But I wanted to update you guys. Um, I'm not gonna address the relationship thing again. What I will say is, um, you know, the next time I'm in a relationship, um, I need to remember what I'm doing and not alter my state of being or alter my goals in life for the relationship. I was never pressured to not foster. That was a decision I made on my own, regardless of why I did it. I was, I was, I was um, going through a lot of the loss of a child from the, in the system and then also enamored and excited and in love and all of those wonderful butterfly things. And, you know, made a decision that was, I think a little more swayed for the relationship than it was actually because I was upset at the system. So your boy's back. Um, I'm excited. I'm really excited. I, I actually am like really, really, there's been, I, I will say this, the entire time of not fostering, I cannot tell you how many times I would see, I live in a very walkable area in Sherman Oaks, right on the boulevard. There's a lot of like young families and every time I'd see a young family with a baby in a stroller, like it broke my heart. I just wanted to be doing it so bad. And I can tell myself, I was telling myself so many times in my head, just like, oh, it's okay, just wait and all of these things. and. I don't know, but that's that. So um, I wanted to update you guys. Thank you so much. I can't, I pray to God I get a phone call very soon. And the next one is a light, nice little vlog style of, of me with the new baby, but everything's back here. I'll do another video soon. Thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for the support. It, I'm telling you guys, even still, there are some videos from earlier this year where there are new foster families that are contacting me about their experience and thanking me for all the things I've shared. So that's it. Goodbye. Peace out.